welcome, Ooh. welcome, guys. Welcome to the flats. Thank you for having us. Hey, Thank hey. you for coming. Thank you for being here. We got a Canberra Short Film Fest special. So we're talking to a bunch of filmmakers today and got you guys in the studio with us. Quick little shout out to Capital Brewing, the sponsor of this uh, little podcast. So thank you to them yeah. for being involved and they're involved in the short film festival as well. So it's awesome to have their support. Um, how's it all been going? How's the uh, how's the festival coming together? Oh, um, feels like... Feels like it's coming really fast. Um, yeah, I just feel like we always need way more time. Um, but yeah, good. I don't know. I'm pumped. I feel we feel pretty blessed actually because I think throughout like COVID, with all the different like lockdowns and restricted things and all that sort of stuff happening, we've still been able to like go. Mm. You know, 2020 yeah. and 2021. So. I gonna, it's perfect timing. I'm feeling that they weren't going to even have. Live screenings. Yeah, yeah. So I think we were one of the few festivals to be like lucky enough to fall, you know, yeah, and awesome. still be able to do like an in person, like an IRL event. It was really cool. Mm. Um, obviously, we do have to think about some sort of online, you know, thing maybe going forward. I don't know because things seem to be going that way. But I feel like you still have to have a live event. Definitely. Yeah. 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 So it's been good. Awesome. I don't know. Awesome. Pumped. Yeah. And Jamie, we got you in just you. In the wheelchair, <laughs> and struggling here. Oh fuck! On 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 some meds, trying to oh, get through. I'm, yeah. I'm What's been going on? Benzoed up. Benzoed. <laughs> my opio- my yeah. Opioids. Um, yeah, nothing. Just trying to adjust back into normal life. If you can call it that. Yeah. Did you have work yeah. still pretty consistently over lockdown? Like. Mm, I was super lucky this. This time around, mm-hmm. uh, round two of lockdown. Last year mm. sucked. Like, I just saw my bookings dwindle. Like, you know, I had bookings up until September. And they all just yeah. went. And then this year I had some ongoing work, like just doing a lot of product stuff for some local companies. And then um, I do a lot of real estate stuff. Okay. And so they, I guess, just based off last year, they knew how to approach it this year. So mm. I could do a lot of marketing. So it was good. That's cool. Um, but yeah, I love lockdown. Like, it's, Me too, low key. So yeah. I just wish I had a drug <laughs> habit still. Like, <laughs> I just. Oh, man. I yeah. mean, I'm with you. I love the green. I'm all about the green. But um, so lockdown has served me really, really well. But I I just feel like it's just been cool for people that like really enjoy being at home and just doing more slow paced stuff. Like I was still working. I started to go into mm. work every day, but we traded less hours. I just had like more lifetime and that yeah. felt really good. I just, I think it's, it's a lot more, um realistic it's more like realistic way of living makes more, way more sense like, yeah I mean, it does people going to the office and stuff like having yeah. a girl working from home is nice yeah. Just, yeah yeah is she like fully back into being all in the office or um, she don't they're half introducing half? it i think it's like yeah week on week off in the See, office i like that not, i yeah. think that should just be life in general yeah yeah 100 yeah sick yeah. what have you been doing nick yeah um I had to sort of shut down the flats, obviously, for a little bit, so that kind of sucked, mm. but um, it was good, good to have a break and uh, be able to kind of tee up a little nice solid run of the next step, so we got plenty plenty coming and totally. also f- finished a project that's going to be in the festival during the lockdown, yeah. so um, that was good, good time to kind of be able to just focus on one project. Mm. We, we, were you doing any work? Like that during lockdown, like like personal personal stuff. projects or anything. Nah, I should have. I should have definitely worked. I just I was happy to have a break. Like, don't be yeah. shooting on yourself. You I know, you do what you need to do. No, yeah, I just yeah. I don't um I'm terrible at making. I hate. I don't want to be one of those like hustle people. I think that's the cringiest thing. Like hustle math. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I just I'm that. really bad at um setting time for myself. So it was just like as soon as it was lockdown, I finished up a job. And I was mm-hmm. like fucking, whoosh, I'm on holidays. Yeah, you probably um, just needed it though, you know. Oh, for sure, yeah. 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 It was nice no, just like cuddling the dogs and the cats all day. Yeah, yeah. Eating shit food. Ugh. Smoking heaps of babes. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just go over some ground rules real quick? <laughs> yeah. Because I feel yes. like I'm going to make a fool yeah. of myself. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What? Can we swear? Yeah, no, what are you talking about? I can't help oh, but swear. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm, I apologize. Yeah, yeah. I apologize, mum. I feel like we need. What, what, what was the safe word? Pumpkin. Yes. Yeah, because I run my mouth like I told yeah, you. Yeah, we're, we're cutting the mics and the feed. If not from now on, oh yeah, <laughs> don't say it. But yeah. no, I warned yeah, Nick yeah. the first time he hit me up. We got so one rule, okay? 
I hate being in front of the camera. And Me I run too. my mouth, it's the worst combo. So I said, like, I'm just going to say some inappropriate shit. I'm putting it up. What a perfect so, combination. I'm, like, right. sweaty and nervous and yeah. I just tend to just say stuff. As soon so. as I start digging a hole, you got to start filling we'll it pull in. pull you back yeah. out. Yeah. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Puppet Master here is going to control everything. Yeah. We got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, we're going to talk about this, like, film of yours, Nick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> soon. We'll, okay. we'll have okay, more okay. soon. What's we'll the, have is more it, soon. A, like, a All short right. film piece, like a doco? Nah, so we got – it's a – Feature, not feature length, but a feature doco that um, I've been doing for a, over a year. St- I started oh, it at the end of the last lockdown. Uh, it's going to be premiering at the fest and then we'll be putting it out everywhere after that. So it's a little um, very Canberra project that um, I'm very keen to get out. And uh, so, yeah. We'll have more soon. More yeah, soon. I'm pumped. Sick. Yeah. I've seen it. I've seen oh, you see that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what happens when you're in the background? You get all the ins on yeah. what's coming up. I had, a, I had a real cool concept that would have been perfect for film first. Very Canberra. Yeah. Like entrenched yeah, in Canberra it, yeah. history. Mm. Um, but it's in talkings with a, like me and a couple of friends. Okay. Well, I mean, we got a cool little. You know, yeah. We're definitely we'll keen to yeah. see what that is. Yeah, yeah. I want to see mm. that. I want to mm. see that. Come on, submissions open in January <laughs> for 2020. I'm going to need longer than that. It's all right, take your time. And you, Jamie, have a film in the fest too, as well as as some music videos. Dominate. I fucked up, yeah. Um, (laughs) So we've also got um, the the director of one of those projects who you collabed with in the chat. Mm -hmm. Um, I think he can hear us, but we'll get him in in a minute. I'll just um, pull up the... um, the actual video. Oh, yes. Be- behave yourself, aren't you? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> All right, let's listen to this. Because um, it's a cracking piece. And while we have a watch of that... Um, ah. Oh, now I have to listen to my voice. I'm so nervous Ooh. every time I... Soundscape of this is this. That is so many little details that you're just, you're just looking at the wall. I think I just, when you when you film it, you see all the bits that you could have done better. Mm-hmm. Just have that issue, I can't. I always feel like I'm doing it. Never feel 100% like I'm doing it. It does what it needed to do. It was, it was on um, it was on NITV. So it was a weird moment that she was on SBS. Yeah. Like gratifying mm. is that too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like also that's a very creative thing that you just said. Like you're never really truly 100 percent satisfied with your work. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Yeah. Never. But that's how we keep growing and getting better. This is why we like. Yeah, come on. It's a curse. Yeah. It is a curse. Blessing but a curse. Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Look, if you ain't um, critiquing yourself yeah. and constantly pushing for more, then how are you gonna grow? Yeah. Yeah. But I do. Yeah. I think I just should give myself. A lot more credit because I don't think people realise how hard running gun filming is. Mm-hmm. Um, like, there's so many different um, elements to putting a video together. Yeah. Like, it's not just as easy as pushing record and being like, <laughs> you know, and there's a video like, especially when you're running and gunning, you're trying to adapt to it. Like, you know, changes the lighting and mm-hmm. fucking everything. Yeah. yeah. It, was a, it was a really cool day. It was a really, really... Um, it's a huge blessing to be a part of this for sure. Yeah, totally. Totally. I, I love it. I don't know. I'm going to just say, back yourself a bit more. <laughs> All right. So let's bring in uh, the special guest. Hey. Luke. Hey. <laughs> Can you hear us, mate? I hope this will work. Yeah, we got you there. You're fresh out the shower. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, you gotta you gotta give yourself more props, brother. No, nah, I know, I oh, know. You know me though. See, see. You gotta talk yourself up, man. Your talent is real. <laughs> Thank you, Luke. <laughs> you see me in Mario Kart, boy. You know. I mean, you beat me in Mario Kart too. Okay, <laughs> got me, got me a fire fire clip. Bought my vision for life, and, and you beat me in Mario Kart. <laughs> two two wins in one one day. <laughs> see. So, Luke, thank you so much for joining us in the flats here, man. Um, how did you guys link up for this this film? 
Hey, I, I put a call out uh, 20, was it 2019 now? Um, mm. Late, late 2019, because I, uh, I left my full-time job uh, at the start of 2018 and uh, dive into this independent world. And I just wanted a mate, you know, I, I got a lot of creatives around me. I just wanted a mate to hold my camera, my little A6500, um, playing with these ideas around the city that, that we see in the clip. And um, the brother here hits me up in the DM, slides up in the DMs, bro, I'll come, I'll come and shoot some stuff for you. And I was like, look, I got no coin, you know, like, yeah, I got nothing to give you. And he's like, nah, I, I like the stuff you stand for, the work you do. And um, it'd be an honor to come up. And I was like, rock, you know, this brother's going to drive from Canberra to to just hang out with me for a day. I never met him in person, you know. And um, sure enough, we he comes up and we, we shoot we shoot a whole day. And I realized that I, I, I messed up the paint, the painting on my, on my, on myself, the traditional paint up, you know, I sent it to my, um, my leader or my, my elder, so to speak, my song man. And he's like, the paint up's wrong, bros. Like, can't put that out. So sure enough, I have to come back up and make another trip, eh? Yeah. Yeah. It was worth the bar. I was, so, I was ready for it. I was like, when you're young and full of energy, it's like, yeah. fuck it, let's go. What are you talking about? You're still young. Jeez. I'm old. So mm-hmm. two years ago, you acting like this clip was like <laughs> 10 years back. Like, nah. <laughs> no, it feels, it feels like so long ago, eh? Like, now you said 2019, but I was mm. still pretty fresh. Like, I just kind of moved into the, um, the like full time sort of oh shit, the full time freelance game and um so I was still super fresh like I was still figuring my shit out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So then you come back up again and we 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 knocked it out the park, you know. So mm. good day chilling. That's for them. That's for sure. Yeah. Sick. But yeah. like the concept behind it was always about um this me as an indigenous man living away from my traditional countries um, and, and what that plays, plays how that, that, how do I identify, how I navigate these worlds, you know, how I navigate the, tr- the contemporary world, the Sydney, the city, the, you know, these big concrete jungles and um, while also having a, a, my, my cultural responsibilities as well, you know, my, Unfortunately, a lot of resources and, and land and elders and knowledge holders are passing on. And, you know, I, I'm getting older and I'm living away from country more and more and year and year and trying to keep up with this rat race. And what do I, how do I, how do I navigate both? You know, I, I've got work with my career, my arts career, and I might not have the funds sometimes to go back home, but then a project comes up and it's just this constant juggling and this constant political battle here and, cultural battle there and yeah so that's kind of how the concept kind of came up as well that's so heavy <laughs> like yeah i mean i mean just not, i don't know I, I like that you use art to share that i don't know share that but yeah that's that's a lot that's really heavy <laughs> yeah definitely i'm a trained dancer myself I, I dance um ballet contemporary but i started off in traditional dancing aboriginal uh, Torres Strait Island dancing and this just wasn't a dance piece you know like visuals you know there was no speaking in it so visually what how do how can I bring those to life you know what am I trying to say and again Jamie brother got he hit everything you know I said I wanted I wanted a shot in front of Cook you know and I wanted to look stand tall and proud and bigger than Cook and that you know you come in with your vision and your skills and your knowledge and bang did that sick Kubrick style kind of yeah, I was like, oh, there, I, I saw something and you put your flavor on it and blew it out of the world. I was like, oh, okay. I really wish and we had that, um, that idea we had for the Lest We Forget thing. You remember that? We're going to go in all like ninja style. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck, we should have done that. Hey, you got your skills upgraded now. So, <laughs> what, we might have to reshoot yeah. shoot it. Next part two, day, part next two. Day. Yeah, come, let's do it. <laughs> I like it. Mm. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, you actually got um, you got two videos in. You're like the most featured man in this um, film festival. Yeah. So um, <laughs> uh, ba- Bala is also screening uh, at the festival this year. I had no idea to be real. Yeah. To be yeah, honest. Yeah. It's um it's cool. It's kind of cool. They're actually screening both on the same night as well. So um, we're doing like. Camera's gonna be sick of me. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, come on down. Come down. Seriously. We'll have a ticket for you if you want to come. Bring a friend. What, we have what, two tickets. What date is it? Uh, oh, this is why I kept my phone out. See, I told you I would need dates. Uh, all right. Wednesday, the 17th of November. I actually might be there. There we I go. There. there we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Re returning <laughs> to the the roots, uh, Luke, you you spent a bit of time in Canberra. Yeah, I did my, my last couple of months of primary there and then um, my teenage years till I was about 18, 19 and I, I left. But yeah, I think a lot I, I uh, a lot of who I am today, my my cultural side, my artistic side. Um, my roots belong there in Canberra. You know, I started my traditional dancing there. I started my contemporary and Western dancing there. And um, it's it's based for, for now, like mum and dad are, are still there. My brother's still there. My niece is there. Um, juggling with this idea of home and what home is, it, that that's home at, for me at the moment, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love this place. <laughs> we got some mad Canberra's creatives. So underrated, yeah. yeah. It's really so underrated, underrated and people just think it's boring. I'm like, yo. You boring. Maybe a little bit boring, but their food game and the culture game stepping up down there. I see yeah. you. I Amen. see you, Cam. It's just so it's so young. People forget how young Canberra is. Just yep. takes time. Like in comparison to Sydney and Melbourne and everything. Mm -hmm. Like we've been here for what, 102 years? Like that? Yeah, about that. 102, 103, something. Yeah. yeah. I should know. Don't quote me. 1901, no? <laughs> is it? I don't know. I've got no idea about Canberra history. Yeah, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Nick? I don't know. Yeah, no, I did. Um, <laughs> We're really representing here right now. Thank you. you. You mentioned there you were doing, um, starting your contemporary dance career in sort of Canberra or your, your skill set there, and you eventually took it to the Bangara and around the world. What was that like traveling uh, to, you know, New York and Paris uh, Mate, during those times? I think I'm just constantly pinching myself, you know, just. Yeah, it, it's just a real surreal. I left high school not knowing what I wanted to do. I, I think I was working at Foot Locker and Woden and um, had no idea. You know, my cousins, uh, cousins Patty Mills, he goes he goes over and plays college ball in the states. I had another cousin by the name of Tim Cornforth played um, rugby for New Zealand and uh, Wallaby Sevens, and he's over in New Zealand, and I'm kind of at, at, in in Canberra, you know, and not knowing what to do and along the way kind of pick up this contemporary dance thing and now I'm off to dance college as a, as a basketball player then I'm from the indigenous dance college to a university a mainstream university where kids have been dancing since they were two and um, I'm struggling and um, I'm about to quit and then next thing you know the same day I'm about to quit and you know done I get a call from Bengara and they say come on down and you know, three months later, I'm performing at the Opera House and you're just like, what the hell is going on with my life? But it's a surreal moment. And it's Bengara is an uh, Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander Indigenous contemporary company representing culture around the world. And here I am in New York City, you know, the place that I fell in love with basketball and, and hip hop. And here I am performing on the stage there. And then I'm flying over to Paris and it's just, it's so weird. And I'm still kind of, trying to comprehend it all as well, you know, like this little black fella from, you know, Canberra dancing, his island dancing in, in the freezing cold of NADOC weeks in Canberra in July and half naked at school and his peers are laughing and, and next thing you know, I'm dancing in front of, you know, at the Eiffel Tower, you know, with the, in, in Paris near the Eiffel Tower and New York and Mongolia and Turkey and I never expected it. I thought I was going to be a basketball player, so... Amazing, man. Yeah. Well, we'll let you go, Luke. Thank you so much for jumping in uh, and chatting to us. Um, it's been you awesome, man. Me. Really appreciate it. Thank you. And, uh, we'll see you on the, uh, what was it? The 17th. See you on the 17th. 17th Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Your yeah. gold medal. Appreciate <laughs> <laughs> you up. All right, man. We'll, we'll talk soon. Thank you. That was cool. Wow, so cool. Yeah. You're so right, cool. a little, little flustered there. Listen. Why you got to out my laundry in front of everybody <laughs> in the internet? <laughs> I just think he's really cool. Yeah, what a guy to work. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 Shh. 
Someone offer I'm free tickets. I'm not blushing, you're blushing. <laughs> I got two free tickets. Right? I got two free tickets for you. I don't have a date. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't. <laughs> no, I'm good. Oh, oh, nah, that was Sorry. really cool. I'm glad we got that Zoom work into. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll get another couple of guests in soon. Um, Love it. But yeah, ha- I wanted to ask you, Jamie, about um, the uh, the editing sort of style and uh, skills that you have. Like a lot of, um, I, th- I, th- I think a lot of the time that, the music videos, the difference between a good one and a great one is the editing. And uh, how, how did you get into that sort of filmmaking side of it and the editing side of it? And um, where did you learn that? Mm. God, I haven't even thought about this. I think um, I've really, over the over the years, I'm saying like I've been doing this for ages, <laughs> over the years that I've been doing this, um, I've really stopped trying to take an influence. So I've stopped watching a lot of other creators. Like, I, I like um, a lot of a lot of dudes and I hate saying dudes, but a lot of people doing it in the Australian scene that I look up to, I've just stopped looking at their work because I was noticing that like just certain things while I'd be editing, I'd be implementing their style and stuff. So I was like, fuck, i got to come with my own. But I think originally it sort of stems where like back to where I actually started doing videos, mm-hmm. which was more like I filmed a whole bunch of, okay, long story short, I had a um, a friend, a guy that used to be my friend. Oh. Um, and he started wanting to become a rapper. Okay. And he asked me to help him with his <laughs> rapping career. Okay. And because I was, I, was I was producing at the time, um, I was doing some photography and stuff more just as a hobby. I studied media in college. It's like the only thing I was good at in college. I used mm-hmm. to have a, a YouTube pa- like a YouTube um page with a bunch of mates which I, I wish it, it still up oh i wish it was it was actually so good it's oh. called wild chippies why do people delete this and we stuff? used to do like uh skits and would recreate music videos and then yes uh one of the boys that was in the group i think he got embarrassed because it was pretty embarrassing but um <laughs> he deleted it so Boo. um anyway i was helping this dude out with his music and stuff and one day he's like oh um i want to shoot a music video and i was like oh cool like when are you sort of thinking? He's like, tonight. I was like, oh, like, who are we going to get to film it? He's like, you are. I was like, oh, like, I don't know how to okay. do that. Yeah. I didn't know anything about frame rates and fucking. Like, Did I you have this, gear? I had a little um, Olympus, fuck, I still remember, Olympus OMD E10. It's like a, it's a good camera, but it's just like a little point and shoot. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, I've got no idea what I'm doing. So let's just, you know, get a couple boys, turn up, we'll film some, just so we don't waste anyone's time. Yeah. I guarantee it'll be garbage. Like, <laughs> we'll just film you guys sitting in your car and doing whatever. So he hits me up and he's like, oh, um, meet us here, which was like behind the monkey bar. Um, oh, like in that, yeah. <laughs> that fucking that, little alleyway. That alleyway, yeah. He's got fucking like 15, <laughs> sorry, I keep swearing. Um, good, good. He's got like 15 boys with him. He's got like Ducatis and <laughs> everyone's all in all black. Like, True rap video stuff. Yeah, it was like mm-hmm. pre drill shit, but like drill shit. But <laughs> yeah. anyway, didn't have lights, but lucky one of my mates was there, was a tradie, and he had some, um, what do you call them? Like, those like, um, oh, like work site lights. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I filmed this video, and it was just like the, the footage was shocking. Like, I don't know what to do with it. It was real dark and stuff. So I then compensated in, I was like, how can I get around this? So I was mm-hmm. like, I'll just go edit heavy and like, I just studied a bunch of YouTube shit and Google shit and just, yeah, um, yeah, just and that sort of like led on to, I guess, my style now, which I'm trying to, um, I think you got to pick and choose when you, when you want to um, use that sort of stuff. But mm-hmm. like, if you look at some of my later videos, I got one coming out with Shaka that is, um, I've just planned it out. I think it's going to be. Shout out to Shaka. Yeah. This is like, it's going to be a mad video, but yeah, this is actually the one I was going to reference. So if you actually wanted to as well, there was a video I was going to enter in for the First Nations. It was a video I um, I donated for a guy called Nuki mm-hmm. uh, for NADOC Week. Okay. And that was the same as that sort of initial video was like. We just filmed a whole bunch of stuff running gun. And I was like, all right, got to make this pop with some editing. Mm-hmm. Whereas something like this, the goal was like just super cinematic. Yeah. Um, just focus on the concept, um, you know, composition. Yeah, like I love this video. This actually, there's a m- fucking story behind this one, a story and a half. But. I think I was saying this obviously before we started, but like 
the quality of music videos that just comes out of this city is on it's on international par yeah. like it's just hands down that's how just in my opinion it's our strongest category in the short film festival every year um just in terms of canvas submissions mm. and i don't know i don't know what it is but like this this just fits in with anything else that's up at that level do you know what i mean oh thank you yeah yeah with this one um so Mabeo, the artist he hit me up um sent me the song and i fell in love with it because i can't think of a concept so the song's mm. about betrayal stuff so i came up with this storyline that if you watch the whole video you'll kind of get what it's about but mm -hmm. i had um an assistant ready like lined up to help and a gaffer as well awesome um that kind of like pushed our budget like blew our budget completely out of the water but i was like you know i want this to be amazing yeah so turn up to sydney an hour before we're supposed to shoot the lead role for the girl mm -hmm. she calls in sick so we reschedule <laughs> he then lines up this other girl she she did an awesome job but like it was mm -hmm. her first time sort of playing such a heavy role. Yeah. My two assistant dudes couldn't come through. They're both, um, I had a guy from Sydney. Mm -hmm. I mean, from, sorry, from Canberra. Um, his name's Ollie, Southside Media. What's up? Hey. Um, but he couldn't make it. So I had two other guys lined up. They cancelled. Mm -hmm. So I shot this thing completely solo, um, like car full of lights. We shot it. It was about 30 hours over two days. Damn. Um, yeah. Like the last, sh the last day we shot from, fuck, like, 12 till 5 a.m. Okay. Um, and so, although it's not where I wanted it to be, it's something that I it's like one of the videos that I like look at and I'm like, fuck, like I did this by myself. Yeah. 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 And I feel like That's I need incredible, to man. advertise right. it like, so, yeah. which, I, yeah, I suffer from imposter syndrome where like every time <laughs> I do something and people like it, I'm like, I don't feel like I deserve those, um, those compliments. I, I feel you. Yeah. I'm right with you. But with this, I'm like, I don't feel like it doesn't get the, like, what's it got? 1200 views. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, it's got a mad concept. Yeah. This guy performs really well. Um, he does. I shot it by myself. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. I mean, look, this is the whole reason that we do our festival, right? I mean, I know it's not thousands and thousands and thousands of people, but it's mm. a whole new audience that hasn't seen, like, the people that are going to come to the festival, I'm going to say, like, 80 to 90% of them wouldn't be seeing your work. You know what I mean? They're just yeah. a different audience from what your normal yeah, thing sure. is. Um, but, yeah, just to show them, like, Canberra represent. I mean, mm. and also national films. I mean, the national films are so strong as well. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting. Like every area, like every country kind of almost has their own style of things going mm. on. And I think, yeah, I don't know. We're just killing it in the yeah. music video scene. <laughs> and docos, by the way. Yeah. Um, I feel like our documentary filmmakers are really strong here too. I think so, so they're kind of my yeah. two. Yeah. I mean, that's how I found Nick Vivas. <laughs> <laughs> Nick made me cry. Nick made me cry in the cinema. Yeah. And I wasn't the only one. Um, green light? Yeah. Green light. Yeah. Couple like, years. what was it? Like? Yeah. yeah. Seven or eight minutes long? Yeah. Eight minutes and crying. <laughs> and I could hear <laughs> so much job. sniffling going on around. And I was just like, this is some powerful stuff. Like, having such a short window of time to convey, like, a, yeah. a, a complete story or, like, um, a wave of emotion. It's just, I don't know, it's just really cool and it's very powerful when it's done right. Mm. You know, and then... You come to like a session, it's like, what, 100 minutes or whatever, and you're seeing like maybe six to eight, maybe sometimes ten films, and you're like going through so many different waves and roller coasters of emotions because everyone's just packing all these tight little stories into this thing. Yeah. I think like, you know. I'm super excited. Yeah, visual yeah. storytelling telling is yeah. just so powerful. It's going to be it's gonna be a good fest. And speaking, awesome. speaking of documentaries, we have a uh, another filmmaker, the – in the chat, um, just see if we can get the oh. volume up. And can you hear us there, Liam? Maybe good. Okay. Just a bit red. <laughs> can you hear us there? Hello? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. there we go. There we go. Awesome. How's it going, guys? How hey. You doing? Good, man. How are you? Thank you for popping in. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, so, um, Liam is from the Crestwick Collective and has a bunch of films in the, uh, in the fest. Um, recently returned from New York. How do you, how are you finding Canberra and how are you finding making films in Canberra, man? 
Oh, well, it's, it's, it's now been two years since I got back to Canberra. So I got back just before the bushfires. So we had the bushfires and then we had the, the pandemic. So it was, a, it was a bit of a wild time. But uh, I feel like now uh, things are starting to, to speed up a little bit. And it's been great to, to kind of reconnect with the, the Canberra scene because I, I was here, you know, seven or eight years ago because um, I went through university doing music degree and, and now, uh, yeah, I'm kind of doing a bunch of different creative things as well with video and photography stuff as well. So it's been awesome to, to start to make some connections with uh, so many fantastic artists and videographers and photographers um, in Canberra. Oh, awesome, man. If you're able to pump up your volume a little bit there, that'd be great, but we can still hear you while you have a yes, look at uh, that. Can you just say that again? Or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now nah, we... This is sick. Watch yeah, this so yeah, this is, crazy. Is, we'll, we'll have a quick watch of um, his work. My name is Luke Cornish, I'm a stencil artist. Originally from Canberra, I've been living in Sydney for the last eight years. My work is, as you can see, photorealistic stencil art. We're in my studio in Marrickville. This is where the We're kind of ruining all the studio. screenings here. Short film fest, but... Leaking all our content. Yeah. Now we good. My connection to Canberra stems these from... Are, my these are all out now. That's one cool thing Canberra about the Still feels like home. Growing up in Canberra and being exposed to politics from such a young age has really informed my art practice. I started my artistic practice in Canberra, um, doing stencils back in the early 2000s. So you won't give it all away, but <laughs> that's um, a giant project you did um, with uh, Luke Cornish, who we've had on the podcast, um, spanning weeks. Uh, how was that, putting that project together? I mean, it was actually spanning months. Spanning um, so months. when w when we shot that initial uh, video, I went up to a studio in Sydney, and uh, the footage from that um, video that you just played is all uh, from that initial shoot. Uh, so so that was kind of the early conception phase, and then he brought all the stencils and all the the art materials to Canberra, um, and that's when he uh, kind of erected this amazing uh, stencil artwork uh, on the side of the street theatre. Um, so it was an amazing process and, and I was very lucky to be um, shooting the, the whole thing with uh, another great uh, Canberra filmmaker, Craig Alexander, um, who's also got a few of his um, short uh, films that he made, um, kind of documenting the process of Luke uh, doing his incredible art. Yeah, awesome, awesome. And you're kind of scheduling a, a bunch of these yeah. throughout in kind of interesting way. Yeah, yeah. I think... Um it's they're like these cute little two minute snippets and they kind of pack a bunch in there and two minute films are just great as like little palette cleansers in between films but also they're like really dope so you know they're well filmed it's like good content so it's just a really I don't know they were just really easy to slot in I think a lot of people discount two minute film um, but if you can get a cool little anecdote in a two minute bit it's just like it's like candy for festival directors because we can just dot them in everywhere, um, and it kind of helps break up when you have like really long films or something that might be really heavy. It's just something else to put in. So yeah, it's really it's they were really cool to see though. That was a good, good project. Well, thanks thanks for having us. We're <laughs> so glad to be included. No, nah, thanks thanks for yeah, taking part. Thanks, Liam, and thanks for popping in tonight. Um, we'll let you go, but um, any any cool projects on the way that we can expect? Yeah, I'm currently uh, birthing this this new project, uh, kind of in collaboration with the Street Theatre, that combines my music, my video, and my photography, um, and it's a kind of an exploration of fatherhood. And I'm hoping to to continue writing that and hopefully put it on um, sometime next year. Dope, unreal, mate. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, and uh, we'll catch you at the fest. I'm See sure. You at the fest. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Bye. All the best. Bye. Bye. Lovely, fe lovely right? fellow. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what actually has been kind of cool? I feel like um, COVID has brought back all these people from that have like left mm. and gone overseas. I mean, in like across industries in Canberra, it's been kind of awesome getting all this good, good juice, good seeds back here. Good seeds, very. I don't know. Choice of name is <laughs> questionable. What? Seed, shit grows from seeds. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so I'm making you out to be a <laughs> deviant.
Oh, oh. It's gonna be, yeah, sorry. You're trying to make me blush. Very sorry. Anyway, yeah, I think, um, yo, so we got a new category this year, which I think um, it'll be cool. It will somewhat be linked to our next guests. Um, but the experimental film category. Because, mm. mm. um, like, what is experimental film? What isn't it? Yeah. It's just um, a really cool one. But, yeah, Photo Access came to us and they really wanted that. So that's kind of their category that we threw into the festival. How many entries um, did you get for that? Oh, plus 600 this oh, year. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got, um, you know, so that's over 10 categories. We've mm. got, like, three-ish judges per category and they're all people that are, like, relevant to that. So, yeah. like, you know, the guys that are doing music video are either teaching music really, really relevant in the music scene or our artists, yep. you know. Um, and same like First Nations is all First Nations, a whole First Nations panel judging those films. Good, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just really important for us to get people that are sort of relevant in those sectors to do it. So, yeah, we have these judges that come in and do this like insane job of judging films over I think maybe a two or three week period. Um some categories are cool because they might only have like 20 to 30, maybe 50 films, but then you get like national or international that has like hundreds mm. and those judges have got to go through and watch all of that. And then our you know festival director, John, has to go through and basically watches all of them himself because he kind of oversees all of that. And so we've gone from, yeah, that's 600 films down to about 196, I think, um, from I think over 20 different countries. Wow. Which is pretty dope too, yeah, you know. Um, yeah, so it's cool. It's just been growing and growing. I watched this the other day. Well, speaking of, yeah, we, sick. We, we should jump into. Yes, yes. This this isn't in the experimental category, but we can talk about it mm -hmm. um, with our next guest. Yes. Animators, and I'll as we watch this, I'll um, get them teed up. The amount of work that goes into animation is insane. Seriously. Yeah. Oh, dude. If you can cue off a little bit of Imagine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just feel like, I feel like that's something that everyone needs to see. People that were at the festival that saw that stuff, it was, yeah, so cool. Yeah, I don't think people realise how much goes into animation. Like, you're kind of just watching it, but, like, you know, it's not like you're filming movement. You're creating this. Mm. I think, yeah. I don't know. I just think it's such a cool category. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> you got the guys in. Just, uh, oh, see, they got the two characters in. behind them from Imagine. Which is the one that's screening it? It's known this screened, um, Imagine screened a couple of years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, guys. Can you hear us? Yeah. Hello. hello. Hi. Welcome to the flats. Thanks for popping in. Thank you for having us. Don't know if you've seen, but we've just um, watched your current submission for this year's fest. Uh, how, what was the, the process like behind that, that one? Um, so Beautiful Animal was a project that we did with a band in America called Fly Felix. Um, and what happened was, as animators, we were a little bit lucky in the pandemic because there were a lot of bands who couldn't go out and do shows and they couldn't do videos in person. So um, they got in contact with us and we did lots of music videos last year. And this was one of our favorites. That's cool. Um, do you want to say anything about it? Do you want to um, well, about the process was... Uh, basically about the tarot these guys uh, were into the tarot and we um, interpret all the, the 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 symbols and the the meanings of some cards and we packed all the video through basically the meaning of two or three cards in, in the entire yeah the whole album that they did had a different song for every single um, one of the main tarot cards and this song was about the strength card, which is sort of about inner strength. So it's like a conflict between like emotional strength and physical strength. And uh, we tried to represent that in the video. And so the lion and the woman are both the same character, which is why they joined together in the end. That's so cool. So did you, 
so you kind of picked up on the theme or did, did were you just like given full creative go or did you get given a little bit of a brief in that? Uh, they, the only thing that they said was that it was based on the tarot card and then they gave us a lot of freedom. Cool. So it was a great project. They were excellent clients in that respect. Yeah, yeah, that's mad. That's really cool. I like that. The trust in you guys to just go and do your thing. Yeah. While we talk, we'll pull up the um, Imagine video. Oh, I had to get them to show Imagine. I just This was our introduction to Eleanor and Giovanni. Um, 2019? 2019. Um, yeah. yeah. And I mean, these guys, I just want to let you know, like they created the music behind this as well and built the, cr the characters, built the sets, filmed everything. I mean, this is a really, yeah, this is a whole project that they did. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, this was really outside of a normal music video project because it was a personal project and it took us, I think, about a year and a half to do. Yeah, so, so cool. it was yeah. um, an amazing experience to be able to do this. Yeah. And um, I'm not, I'm not going to tell your story for you, but like, can you just tell everyone just a little bit about making, you know, your characters and how you did that? Sure. Um, so these are our characters here. Oh, they got Hold them on. behind them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yay. There they are. Um, yeah. So... Um, they are made out of foam and we decided to create some kind of most monsters but with some some beauties this to create this kind of contrast between uh, something ugly but at the same time beautiful so we base the beauty in materials like shiny materials for her and for him we use this wiring kind of um, colored plastic things um, in his body and yeah. uh, and from that we started to build the music as well we we thought well we should because we were in Spain at the time we were making this video um, so I, I say to Eleanor we should just use some of my Caribbean background to make some of the music and, and base the video in some of the um, Caribbean cities and with that kind of um, uh, aesthetic. And, and from there we, well, uh, moved to Australia and we had to um, build all the other part of the, the, the set here in, in Australia. And, and yeah, maybe that was one of the reasons the project took too long. To us, but yeah, yeah, we animated half in Spain and half in Australia. And when we were animating in Spain, we just had a desk in our tiny bedroom we lived in a share house and we'd just like roll out of bed animate and then just like go back to sleep <laughs> oh, cool all made out of one bedroom you know what i mean like yeah, it's basically cool yeah. about that yeah yeah i love it so did the music come first or the visuals um a little bit of both when we do our own personal projects because we make our own music we often think kind of in the visuals first but when we're writing a song um, we'll be sitting there going like, oh, I have this idea for a song and then the next thing will be the music video will look like this and then we'll write the lyrics and then we'll write the music and then we'll put it all together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the last exercise we have been doing is um, make the music and then uh, imagine the uh, landscape for the music and the emotions that the music uh, evoke and then from that we um make some sketches and then the lyrics and and then um yeah and finally the, the video and we decide also the, the um the type of animation the style because some of the videos could be uh, 2d or um stop motion cool i don't know i like it no. well guys we won't hold you too long but thank you for popping in and, and i know you're part of the festival behind the scenes too this year so it's uh good luck with the uh with all the screenings and look forward to seeing uh some more stop motion from you guys from the studio yep yep we have a new stop motion project for a client coming out in about two weeks oh, for cute. the local musician cj shore i don't know if you know him yeah, yeah well, so he's got a him. video it's in him. this year yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So you can look forward to that in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Awesome. 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 All right. Stay tuned. Yay. Okay. 
See y'all at the festival. <laughs> Thank See you. Bye. Bye. Nice, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Dude, how cute are they? So cute. Awesome. Honestly, imagine awesome. being in a duo like that and just being like, let's just like roll out of bed and like make music and then we'll just like make a cool clip and build all this cool stuff. I am so alone. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I'm good. Um, awesome. So. Well, that is just a little taste of uh, mm. the first. Uh, there's going to be plenty on offer, I'm sure. Oh, boom. Do it's I have to do all like the logistics stuff? We start opening night is on the 10th. Go and give it, give the plug. Yeah, give, give, give the, the plug. plug. <clears throat> this message is brought to you by Master Flats also and uh, Capital. Thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, tomorrow, actually, we have a school's matinee. This is one which is all of like our school's kids, so like under 18s and stuff. Um, if anyone's free in the afternoon, there's a little matinee session happening at Dendi. Um, other than that, we kick off from the 10th. Wednesday the 10th is opening night um, and we're going for like – Two and a bit weeks. I think we go all the way through till the 25th, no, 26th maybe. John's added an extra night. But um, so we'll be, there's all different categories, all different nights. We've got, you know, um, Iranian films. There's a whole night that's just that. We've got a night that's like music videos and animation, um, First Nations stories, um, going all the way through to experimental. Um, there's a few different nights that we'll have some like panel guests, which would be really cool. We're still securing some of them, so I can't say too much about that. Um, and then awards night, of course, the big glitz and glam happening on the 20th. Um, but everything's on our website anyway, csff.com.au. Go check it out. Go check it out. Linked below. Yeah. So I don't know. There'll be something for everyone. I think that's kind of the biggest thing. Um, other than that, filmmakers out there, we were doing, we've been doing this filmmakers networking session um, this time we're doing it on Monday the 15th cause we're doing like a locals night, but it's been really cool. The first year we had like 10 people turn up. Second year was like 20 to 30. Last year we had like 60 filmmakers, a lot of people that hadn't ever met each other, a lot of first timers in all different disciplines. And they all just kind of got together and started talking and some of them are collabed on projects and stuff now, which I think is dope. So, um, yeah, if you're a filmmaker and you want to meet some people, it's a cool way to do it. I have met some cool peeps through this festival and I want to make a film. I want to make something with you. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, be my camera. Give me my camera, dude. Let's do it now. Let's draft up a... Huh? Yeah. yeah. An agreement. <laughs> <laughs> some a, stuff. A rights yeah. deal. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We got a quick shout out from Haley, saying you're amazing. Hey. <laughs> hey. Thanks, Haley. Scott, my... Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, she's here for Jamie, not for me. <laughs> Um, man, shout out to no, Sancho. She, she, cried, she cried at you. Woo! Yeah. Shout out to Sancho who said that she was going to find, she was going to watch this and find any memeable moments that she could make of me. This is the support that I get from mm. my friends. She's just like, I'm going to edit together some really embarrassing shit. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks yeah, for Yeah, share support. those memes with us too. <laughs> Supporting me in my yeah. sweatiest time and my lowest moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is the friends we got. But, you know. Um. I wanted to ask you, Jamie, too, you've been, um, I reckon, one of the most busy creators around Canberra, but you've also been making a lot of stuff in a state and uh, linking in with the West Sydney guys. Yeah. What's it been like tapping into that scene, which is really emerging now, with that new style and the new sound coming out of the, the West there, how's it been creating videos for something like that where mm. it's still the look and the style is still being defined? It was super, super surreal. The, um, like I'm a huge rap nerd. <laughs> um, like I fan out over stuff. And when I started doing music videos in Canberra, like I like, you know, there's so much talent here and mm -hmm. so whatever, but there's, there's some dudes in Sydney. I was, um, huge fans of like I'm talking would listen to more than like they're on my you know my playlist every mm -hmm. day type. Have a rotation. Um, so one of them I think he's like the most underrated dude in Australia I think he's one of the best dudes in Australia his name's Isaac Pirile but I like I put this guy up with like you know the best of the best like mm. internationally you know and he's just very unique he's got awesome subject matter he's a super creative kid like got a cool story very mm -hmm. talented with music and he was one of the dudes I was like, I'm going to shoot for this guy at some point. You know what I mean? Like that was one of my little goals. Yeah. Um, before I knew it, I was like sitting in his lounge room, like setting up my gear. Vaping. Um, 
Vaping? No, oh, no, I was on the ciggies then. Okay. Um, smoking ciggies. I was with my boy Ollie from Southside Media. Mm-hmm. Um, so we did a video for him. Um, and it's like, uh, I'm not saying this in a negative way about the camera scene, but working that was, it was mayhem. It's a, if anyone's new would know this, Nick, working with, um, actually you work with professional, you work with like Kojo <laughs> and Kojo's like the most professional <laughs> dude around, but, um, it's just chaos. Like yeah. these guys don't know anything about like, um, time frames and, you know, the punctuality is terrible. Yeah. Um, it was chaotic, but it was just a, it was very surreal. Like the. It's um, it's just so much natural to them, I guess. That uh, what am I trying to say? What song was that? I'll br- I'll bring so you that. the one we did was a song called "Days in the Rain." Okay. Um, we actually rolled up to Sydney. Suppose like we were supposed to shoot another track of his called "She Said." Mm-hmm. Uh, very very strong song, like very powerful song. It's kind of like he talks from the perspective of himself and his, I guess, his ex girl who they have a kid together, okay. and his side is very biased to. You know him and why he was a piece of shit, mm-hmm. and then he talks about it. He just outs himself on her, like speaking from her perspective. Very cool. But then we rocked up, and he's like, "No, nah, we're gonna shoot this song." <laughs> I was like, "What are we gonna do for it?" He's like, "I don't know." So this was very run and gun as well. Um, but essentially, the story about how we grew up. Like he grew up train hopping and didn't mm-hmm. grow up with a family. Um, this was like a little bit we shot at the end to kind of tie it together, which is just him sort of with a bit of a um, piece talking about, you know, what's like. Like he's just grown up with bad luck. Um, yeah, this is a video actually I really, I really love as well. Um, but yeah, I got I got a few more lined up with some some Sydney guys. Um, yeah, I don't know if I answered your question. It's it's been good. Yeah. It's been a good experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, definitely. So this was one of those moments where you're like, I've made this was a goal and I kind of reached that. I didn't like, it, was, it, was, it wasn't until I was like exporting the first draft and I was like, fuck, like a year ago, I would, I would never would have imagined to be in this position. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, um, I still get that a lot. Like, you know, when new opportunities arise, I'm like, I don't know, like, you know, like I don't deserve this. I'm not good enough. Do you, you ever know? say like, yes to it, you're all pumped and then you get home and you're like, holy shit, why did I say I yes this, to that? I can't do that. I did this thing where I'm like, I'm rolling up to a, a shoot and it's something very new and mm-hmm. um, something I haven't done before and I'm like, I'm wigging out. I'm like, fuck, I'm yeah. not prepared for this, like <laughs> whatever. But then as soon as I'm there, it's, I think it's something that's just been ingrained in me from a young age of just mm. like when it's go time, I just kind of, s- my stress switches into, go. Like, my flight switches into fight. Yeah, all right. Shit. And I'm, I'm like, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I feel that. Um, but yeah, yeah this, guy's, this guy's insane. But I got, yeah, I got a few more guys from Sydney I'm working with, another guy, Pleaser. Got a video a guy called um, Cash Cow. He's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I was supposed to do one with Hefs, like um, Hooligan Hefs and Jay Lex a while ago, but that fell through. Yeah. Um, what else? Sydney wise. So. Uh, do, do, um, uh, I got a bunch of shit with some Sydney guys coming up. So yeah. Cool. yeah so would you say like like would you say like um, music video is kind of where you're like what. Where would you say that your filmmaking passion is at? Like, what kind I'm of stories to, do you like to tell? I really want to get into the documentary stuff. I still haven't mm. done something like that. But mm-hmm. I think my end goal is to, that'll be my main focus. Um, you know, I've got a, like everyone, I've got a story to tell. Not on myself, but like something yeah. I want to, um, I want to take my, my skill set and use that to help spread awareness of certain things. So I think that's, that's where, cool. um, where it'll be. So like documentary stuff for sure. Yeah. Um, I started up a cool little thing, keep an eye out for it. Um, it, it. It was like in the works and then COVID hit. Yeah. Um, but I'm very passionate about rescuing animals. Ah, yes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. me and my partner in crime, my, mm-hmm. my housemate, Sonia. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hottest housemate we, ever. I hit up RSPCA and DAS and I was like, um, actually I watched this, um, this series on YouTube called The Dog House. Which yeah. Was and it's like this really cool um, YouTube series where they pair up you know, broken people with, um, you know, dogs that need homes. It's all of us. And the way it was filmed, it was like, I don't know how you couldn't watch this and fall in love with these animals. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I want to go get a rescue yourself. And I think that, I'm sorry to anyone that has pure breeds out there, but <laughs> like, and anyone that buys from breeders, but it is a, like, it's like an important thing to be aware of. Um, and like, you know, adopt, don't shop, that whole. Yeah. Thing. So I hit up Dustin and RSPCA and I was like, I want to start something with you guys where, you know, I'll come in, film mm-hmm. the dogs and take really beautiful portraits with them. Like, 
um, Sonia wants to dress them up with flowers and do all That's this and cute. just do these really cute profile videos. Yeah. And so we'll be starting that up um, hopefully pretty soon. Yeah, cute. Um, but yeah, end goal, documentary type stuff. I love, I'm not, I'm not heaps keen to get into feature films. I don't mm-hmm. know why. Like it's just something about it. I think the stress of it all, like working with a huge crew. Yeah. Stresses me out. Dude, the um, budget also. I yeah, mean, not like, to, like it's just. Playing know, with other people's money. It, it, mm. Yeah, right. And you're talking about stuff that can like make or break like your future for a certain amount of time. Like oh. that, fe- that, just that financial part of it, I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's why short films don't because it's just so much more achievable for people. Exactly, yeah. I'm, but, yeah. Yeah, I definitely want to do a whole bunch of short films. I've got yeah. some, like, concepts I want to work on. and mm-hmm. um, But I, I love music videos, for yeah. sure. Like, a, th- that's just... um. I don't know if you've seen one of my little Instagram rants. I have these moments of, like, weakness where I just yeah, get on Instagram look. and I'm like, fuck the world. <laughs> but I was just pretty much like, I'm sick of doing the same shit. Like, yeah. I only want to do stuff that is mm-hmm. different, mm-hmm. Um, that pushes the boundaries, that, you know, is conceptual, that has a message. Like, I'm sick of filming dudes thinking they're cool standing in front of each other, being, which is cool. It serves a purpose for sure. Of course it does. We've all got space I can't do it anymore. Yeah. I'm going crazy. Like, yeah. Um, and then, like, fuck, people hitting me up being like, I've got this crazy idea. It's like me, my boys in front of this car. <laughs> and like, you know, the RGB lights, you got those with the red and the blue. Like, yep. the like I'm like, fuck, like, we could do so much more. Yeah, it's true. Um, it's true. you got to find some people that are like more storytellers, I guess, is the, yeah, you know, yeah. stuff that's like so, firing something in you. Yeah, I got, I got a, um, I'm working very closely with a good friend of mine. Um, he's a Canberra veteran, mm-hmm. a very influential figure in Canberra who's mm. been, gone on a bit of, um, a uh, bit of a hiatus. He's making a okay. comeback. Oh, okay. Um, Juicy. And we've just been, uh, okay. yeah, we've been um, punching out ideas. He's got a, he's got something coming which is crazy, okay. and um, I'm like very blessed to be a part of the process. He's, That's exciting. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Got this wonderful little bubbling creative, you know, industry going on here. Yeah. I love it. Mm, cold cold collab collabing. Um, mm. Like, I mean, Nick, what about you? Like, what's your I always want to know, like, what's your favourite style of filmmaking or storytelling? Or you know? Very similar to Jamie's approach is I have never been that interested in making feature films mm-hmm. or going down that route. Um, I like working pretty much alone all the time. That's pretty much the only way I'll work, maybe with a couple of close mates. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that doesn't really interest me that sense. Um Music videos was definitely a big part of what I did and similar to Jamie, got um, a bit stuck in a loop of doing just them. So uh, that's why I wanted to start this, which is what I'm most interested in now is like creating these sort of a bigger thing that is a platform in itself Mm. where we can showcase some of these videos. Like like we mentioned before the the video earlier, it's such a great piece of work and people aren't getting onto those grassroots videos and seeing them. Yeah. So if we can help get stuff out there, then that'd be awesome. Yeah, for sure. um, For sure. You're the guy to do it as well. This whole, um, as soon as the Mustard Flat side of the stuff started coming out, I was like, yeah, this is it. Yeah. (laughs) Like just the branding, the, you know what I mean? It's It's all on um, point. It it represents Canberra in a really like new way. Yeah, and I think it's just, like, so necessary. I love it, like, bringing all these different creatives together from across so many different disciplines, which is dope as Mm. well, like... Yeah, having no real limit to it uh, has been really fun. Yeah. Because you get a different perspective on everything. Before I forget real quick, I I, I promised him I would um, shout him out, but (laughs) you got to hit up a dude called Vaughn and Danny Pratt with Love. Yeah. Check out the Insta. I've, I've heard of Danny. Danny's, yeah, yeah. crazy music. Vaughn, one of the most hectic poets. Like, Yeah? He's, yeah, I'm, I'm doing a project with him at the moment, just like a one take Can you piece. send me these links um, later just so I remember? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll send them through. <laughs> okay. But he's like, man, it's a dream to go on Mustard Flats. And I'm like, yeah. well, I'm going to shout you out and you're going to go on there and I'm going to put Nick in a headlock. <laughs> and um, but oh, they're, you won't it. have to, man. That sounds yeah. like fun. I spent a day with them and they just, they got mad bands, so they're such good boys. But they're, um, yeah. Danny Pratt's like a rock star. Like he's his stuff's crazy, and Vaughn's poetry is just mm. like insane. Like I'm a sucker yeah. for some good poetry. Yeah, honestly, yeah, cool. I like that. Yeah, I don't know. It's just I think yeah. I mean, man, Mustard Flats has been a little bit of a blessing, born out of, you know, and you kind of came out born like, out of COVID. Yeah, yeah, born out of COVID, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the first lockdown is when I started ordering all this stuff. 
and it took a while to get get here and then it took a while to learn and set it all up. Getting a bit of a flow now, but yeah, it's been really fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just think it's such a cool shout out for our scene here, you know, like mm. we were talking a little bit before about camera just gets slept on all the time. Yeah. I think people are finally waking up. Yeah. Don't they will. Hit, don't hit snooze. They will. You know? <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. yeah, the camera scene's interesting. Like, we breed some of the great, like, you know what I mean? Like, Patty Mills, like, yeah. you know, all fields, you know, mm. the Kyrgios, we've got yeah. like, um, across everything. We always have these, like, we invented, did we invent Wi Fi? Camera invented Wi Fi? Yes. Uh, uh, no, uh, yeah, 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 and micro, fiber, optics fiber optics as well. Yeah. Shit, like, uh, GPS, um, I think, was created by two guys that yeah. were from here. I don't think they're based here anymore, but yeah, it's like cool so stuff much good stuff. On. Good stuff comes out of camera, but yeah. I think the problem is is purely just the age of it. It's like we're known as that little, you know, that big country town in between Sydney and Melbourne, just full mm. of like public uh, servants. That's what everyone's. Yeah. I mean, which we are, and you know what, bless them because they yeah. they help keep our economy going too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's part of part of our audience, right? Mm. Like I feel like we're going in interests. a bit of a like there is there's a ton of creatives now and stuff mm. like that. But I remember it was when Sandra had that chop shop. Yes. Yeah. That era for me was like between La Da, Chop Shop, um, what's that bar? Transit. Yeah. Oh, in the way of like live music, RIP. creative stuff going on. I feel mm. like that was almost like Canberra's, f- the most recent where it was like, fuck. The heyday. Like, the hey golden day. age. Yeah. I think we're, we're back on the, the way up there. You know what I mean? I yeah. think lockdown's been a big, um, big uh, hurdle in that sense. But You think? I, I feel like... Just more La- than last year's lockdown for sure, but this year's lockdown, like there was a bit where some people were. I mean, this is just from people that I've spoken to that mm. are mates and stuff. There was a little bit at the beginning where it was like really tough, and then you've just seen this like this energy just kind of came from somewhere. Something shifted, and then all of a sudden, boom, we came out of lockdown, and it's just like release, 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 release. There's so yeah. much stuff coming. I'm feeling like flooded with stuff, but I, that might just be my circle that I'm around. I don't Random know. Answer. You think? No, no, but I'm just saying, are you experiencing different? I just, I think more maybe like, um, what do you call it? Like in person mm-hmm. sort of events, live oh, music, yeah, yeah, and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I think because it's it's a bit deceptive of the amount of time we've actually spent in lockdown That's and then true. pre and post. That's true. Lockdown stuff. But yeah. um, I just remember going out every, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. There's always something really cool going on. Mm-hmm. Like that was. I think we're coming back. I think it's mm. starting to come back. Like the December ca- this December calendar is starting to look ridiculous, like yeah. in terms of stuff. I mean, yeah, shout out to all the events people in this Planning city. an event mm. and through this it must be a fucking Dude, nightmare. Yeah, but just also like all the – I mean, uh, pff, like I said, we've, we've had it pretty good. Um, you know, cinemas are opening up and things are – you know, capacity for them is really good because I think if you've got fixed seating – the capacity is like 75%, but if you're yeah. somewhere like, say, Smith's or, you know, Sideway or any of those places that don't have a fixed seated area, your capacity is super limited, so it's hard. But, like, like you know. Like 25 people. Uh, yeah, it's like a max of 25 or it's like a one yeah. per four square metre rule, which is crazy for some of those mm. places because they're tiny venues. But, um, I mean, like, but props to them because they're all still, yeah. everyone's coming back slowly, booking in things. I just think, like... It's definitely been hard, but there is something about the community here that, like, people are, you know, starting to move together in a positive sort of mm. way, I think, yeah. I definitely want to see that. I want to see a lot more, um, a lot more, I hate the word, but collaborations. A Dude, lot more. nothing, there ain't nothing dirty about that word. I love that word. Yeah. Collaborate. No, nah, I just, <laughs> I think it's been, it's an abused term yeah. that people use, like, to get free work. Uh, <laughs> like, oh, right, you want to collab right. on this? Now I'm we're like, getting into some juice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I definitely would love to see that. Like, I think there mm. is. Um, fuck, I'm gonna run my mouth here. But um, as <laughs> much <laughs> as <laughs> as much as um, I think there is a sense of ego that needs to drop a little bit. It's like almost mm. like people think that there's only so much exposure and success and limelight where they like they don't want to share it and they're like they try and keep oh. everything in a bubble. So okay. the whole idea behind Burrows Digital Original, not the name, but like the actual business itself, was like mm. I never wanted to be the face of it. I never wanted to show my face on my socials. I never wanted, I wanted to be this just blanket thing. Yeah. Um, because I wanted to avoid that, like, I am Burroughs Digital and, like, I do this and, you know, um, but what I've noticed of being in this industry, and it's, I think it's similar with hospital as well, is there is a weird, like, I don't know if it's just because we're still young, like, 
people want to be protective of their work and like um, in certain circles. I'm not saying yeah. everyone. No, no, I feel um, you. You know, like I'm not shit talking anyone, but I've just had moments where I've worked with people, mm. and it's like they're they're too set on them being the you know the star of the whatever. Oh, and it's yeah. like, Come on, man! Like, who cares? Like, yeah, I, th- I think you and I are really similar like that. We're like, and I mean, we talked about this before we went. <laughs> before we went on live and we we're all saying that we are generally shy and hidden behind, mm. you know, behind the scenes. That's where we're kind of comfortable. Yeah. Um, I feel a bit like that too, but I don't know now. Sometimes I think it's just about like comfort of self, right? Like, so I'm starting to get to a point now where I think I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable with where I'm at, you know, and what I'm doing. I don't even know actually what I'm doing next. I'm kind of trying yeah. to figure out where I'm going creatively I'm next. Spirit, yeah. I'm a free spirit at the moment and it's been good just working away and chilling and enjoying life. But I don't know, at some point when you start to feel a bit more comfortable with yourself and confident with yourself, you know, I know mm. you got it in there, but like when you get there, then you start to be like not wanting to brand yourself, but, you know, just position yourself in a certain way. Like now I'm starting to think about, okay, what kind of projects do I want to do? Where do I want to show my face and how am I going to show it? Like just taking more control of it, you know what I mean? Rather than it just being about being a brand and being out there and being known. Like the thing is people do know you. I know, but I I never wanted to be that. People call me Burrows. Yeah. Do you like that? Is that your thing? No, I hate it. I was like (laughs) driving through the the Canberra Centre and I was just, someone's like, Burrows. And I just turn around and I'm like, what the fuck is like, it's weird to me. It Actually, is, yeah, is true. Cool. Sancho referred to, like, referred to you as Burrows. And yeah. I, I just know you, I mean, I've known you for so long now. Is what? It's pretty cool, me again? Samey. 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 Um, yeah. I don't know why. I just think this, is, good at the this time. is a really, um, this is a really, this was an eye-opening experience for me. But this guy from Sydney, like, I look up to his work. Mm-hmm. His name's Mr. Chen Chui. Shoots a lot of, like, Chen Chui. Uh, him and his um, he's, I'm not sure if his wife, his girlfriend, mm-hmm. have this really cool business where they just film naked chicks okay. like, together. So yeah. she styles them, she organizes the shoots, mm-hmm. and he shoots them. Um, he started doing a few music videos. And so he hit me up and was like, hey, I love your work. I'd love to work with you on something. I like, come Sick. up and shoot. Yeah. So went up, there was four of us though. So it was me, another shooter called um, Juicy, mm-hmm. um, another dude called Dan, and him. And I was a little bit hesitant because I'm like, fuck, there's going to be so many chefs in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, but it was like a really cool experience. It was like everyone was giving ideas. Everyone was, you know, like he had a, a, a shot list. And he was yeah. like, what do you think of this? And I'm like, fuck, I think if you maybe position him like this and it was one of those, um, like the the flow was like, what is the best, who's got the best idea for this? Okay, cool, let's run with that. Cool. So, um, yes. but then the experiences I've had in Canberra haven't been as positive as that. So uh-huh. I'm like, fuck, I want to bring that. Here. So there's a few guys that are really mess with mm-hmm. I don't I'm not, as I said I'm not going to shit talk anyone yeah um, but I would love to start um, I've got a, I've got something coming up which I think is going to be a really good platform for that mm-hmm. um, and I want to I guess just drop you know like just drop the ego the end goal we all share which is just making the best piece of work for whatever it is there's no like I did this and it's you know yeah, um, but, like, I mean, just saying, like, you did something doesn't mean that you're, like, all ego, you know what I mean? No, like, no, but there's a, I think there's a... Fine it's, line. It's kinda. more the attitude mm-hmm. to, yeah. I'm, a, I'm I'm just, I'm a sour individual. <laughs> I just hate everyone. I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking there about. There we go. Yeah, look, I, listen. I, I know. <laughs> mute that, Arnie. Nick, mute Arnie. Mute I, Arnie. Hate <laughs> that, I hate that feeling. No, nah, Nick is I, totally I, one of those people, yeah, by the way. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know. I... I think you can do it both ways. Mm, that's think, that's where I'm trying to come from. Like, mm. um, obviously, time and a place. Obviously, you got to come into the flat and show your face. Yeah, see? But, but you can also then uh, do it behind that Burroughs digital banner too. Mm. Yeah. It's just about controlling your narrative. That's what they call it, right? Yeah. That's how they say it. But, like, dude, Nick, I mean, seriously. So this first year that I met Nick, we started doing – we had um, – Owen Walter, mm. super young, super fresh. This dude had a Owen? very cool he was, eye. He was dropping really cool work and he just... Uh, he's taken a bit of hiatus, you know, okay. creative but burnout. Like 14 years old. What do you he, mean? Okay, yeah, well, so yeah. this is dope, right? <laughs> so I met him... Um, I met him at Uncle Sancho's, okay? He was this little uh, young kid that was just doing... I don't know, like work experience or whatever, which mm. is like dusting shit for Sancho and her stuff and <laughs> yeah, just man. doing whatever else that she needs, right? And... Um, yeah, so I met Owen there, super shy, really, really quiet. Um, didn't do too much back then. And then, 
Yeah, like all of a sudden he was like interested in photography and started taking some photos and then he picked up a camera and wanted to film some stuff. Yeah. And Sancho's like, this dude's really cool. You should like talk to him. And I was like, well, actually I want to film some stuff, like some behind the scenes for the festival, like get some interviews with filmmakers, actors, whoever that's here and that just awesome. capture a little yeah. bit of what was going on. And yeah, Owen came on so keen, just real nervous, but super, super keen. And that's all you want. And he just went along and did it. And I think because he's so shy, this is the one thing about I'm going to say about you sh shy cameramen, <laughs> is um, that you just are really good at just hanging in the background and capturing stuff. You kind of like to watch, right? Yeah. Which is awesome. And Owen did an amazing job of that. And I think he was only like, I want to say like 15 or 16 at the time. Like I'm mm. pretty sure I had to sign as his, like I had to be his guardian for the whole event. <laughs> like, you know, going to Smith's and all these places that like were meant to be 18s only. I was his guardian for that. And yeah, the videos, I mean, he did two years worth for us yeah. and they were dope. I think then even. Yeah. What he achieved in like short amount of time with mm. his business, like similar path, you know, real estate stuff. Yeah. He was doing so much content Ridiculous. and it was amazing. Like, yeah. All of it was gold. Yeah. And he was just killing it. So that's yeah. such a I great eye. Work, yeah. Mm. yeah. So, I mean, like he, yeah, he was doing interviews, which is the first time I had to interview Nick. And I was like, hey, hey, can we do an interview with you? And Nick's all like, oh, I don't know if I want to do, you know, <laughs> like I had to drag, we had to like beg this guy basically to come to the awards ceremony uh -huh. without being like, you are winning something. But being like, you have to be there. It's really important. And then well, just trying to do worse it. Than like, that. <laughs> worse than doing interviews for me is watching my own things oh. in front of people. So I feel that. I'm, I'm, I agree. I can't do it you, and I hate it and I'm not coming to your screen. <laughs> <laughs> but, Damn it. But I'll come and support and then tail it. Yeah, hell it? yeah. I mean, we've managed <laughs> to get him along to screenings, you know, generally. Hey, yeah. so you know that that's like a um, – Adam Driver, who I'm also low-key obsessed with, um, he doesn't watch any of his work, like none of his films. He won't watch any of them. Mm. And I think like I feel like I'm like that, like I cringe looking at yeah. any like any project that I've ever done. When I'm done, I'm like, ugh, who did that? I feel like you're very vulnerable, like you're showing. Mm -hmm. Because people don't see, but all people see is they, they see the end product. But yeah. when you're watching it, you're thinking of all the clips you left out, how mm -hmm. you mm. cut it a bit shorter than you would have liked to and yeah. exactly. a bit like yeah. embarrassed. Yeah. you think that they're saying all these things that you're thinking. Yeah. And like, you have to actually be there in that room like with them. Yeah. yeah. So, like, nah. like everyone's so do, I mean, do you feel like that's gotten easier over time at all? Or no. Nah. 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 <laughs> no I don't, I don't mind showing people like, yeah, as, just as long as I send them a link and they yeah, can and you're not there. stuff and it comes back and I'm not there. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. The, um, it's tough. I had a really big turning point where I realized how important it was to like be proud of your work and mm -hmm. just Oh, I'm getting those burps. <laughs> Take his beer away. <laughs> <laughs> um, where I hate same thing. I'd I'd finish off a job. I'd watch it. I'd send it off to a client. Mm. I'd wait for there. And my thing was always just like make the client happy. And I was going through a bit of a, a rough patch, like a bit of a creative rut. And my friend made me these mad um, weed cookies. And I ate one. Can we talk about this content on here? <laughs> Sorry, can I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, that, that should be Maybe legal here, heroin, so it's fine. <laughs> heroin cookies. <laughs> All right, go back to your weed um, cookies. And I ate one and I, like, I, you know, I haven't gone stoned in so long and I, I sat back on the couch just melting into the couch. I was like, you know, I'm going to watch all my work. And Damn. I sat there and it was like I was watching it from another perspective. It was really weird. <laughs> it was like I was watching it from, like, not as myself. And I was like, fuck, I'm actually experience. not that bad. Like, this is actually cool. Like, Whatever, Aww. and so I've sort of maintained that a little bit, which yeah. is really good. But I still, yeah, I still have that same thing as Nick. Where I'm like, Ugh. I feel like ever since I've known you, you've been like that, like thanks, just Dad. that self doubt. Thanks, Dennis. Sorry, <laughs> I mean I suffer from the same thing. That's I why. A, that's I why I can a heavy judge hand. you. <laughs> <laughs> you me Very you. too deep, too deep. Yeah. <laughs> Withdraw, humble pumpkin, me, pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> pumpkin, really. <laughs> Well, uh, so why did you want that content? <laughs> we can we can carry on. Go, no, go I'm just saying it is it is time to to sort of wrap this up. Hey. Uh, we have been we have been chatting for a good hour and uh, guys. I hope someone found us interesting because yeah, <laughs> I'm like, what have I been talking about for the last hour? I don't even know. Yeah, no, it's been no, awesome. Can, it's been so good. Sure. It's been uh, great and awesome to have our guests on too. Yay. Really cool Thank to you. chat to some of those filmmakers. Mm -hmm. so, um, Get, yes. get over and uh, try and watch some of these films um, if you can in the next couple of weeks because 
Yeah, they're, it's they're gonna be awesome. awesome. Yeah. Sarah Just Sarah real quick before we wrap it up. Yeah. What is? Because I know nothing about this film festival. Oh, Which okay, is, all right. Do, do, if what yeah. do you win? Do you win like a, a if, trophy? D- you do get a trophy oh, if you win your category. You get a trophy. Yeah. Um, everybody also gets awards you know because there's different craft awards so yeah. you've got like best film in a category and then you have other craft awards that we give out like you know best cinematography or best sound yeah, design cool. or you know special effects in some cases um and just some highly commended and stuff as well the prizes all range so mm. we've gotten a lot of um you know things that have been a bit more like you know studio time or mentorships or like you know a, a little bit more yeah. of that stuff coming through there are some with cash prizes you know it's it's all different and we kind of have to figure it out every year so do i wear a suit you can dress however you feel comfortable we don't really do any like red the carpet red stuff carpet. Yeah, yeah the dandy red Did carpet you wear a suit, Nick? nah nah that are you gonna come? You know you're on opening night, right? Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come. Come to, come to, to, come to opening Can night. Windsor? Opening night's on Wednesday the tenth, so next Wednesday. Um, and you get like we do like a little pre-event. You know what I mean? Mm. Canaps, some drinks. Um, it's the wheelchair access. It's Dendi. Hell yeah! Oh, so come on, yeah, we're, we're screening at Dendi and Smith, so both okay. of them are um very accessible for everybody. And you will be seeing more of these guys. Official beer. Come on. Yeah, thanks to Capital. Um, thanks to Capital. Shout out to Capital, actually. They've been on board since I started. Um, and Dan and the crew are just so dope. They get behind so much community stuff. It's really awesome. So, mm. yeah. Uh, we better get uh, Jamie tucked into bed with his sore back. Oh, we're going to have to oh, carry him down the stairs, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, nah, seriously, guys, thank you so much. Thanks, thank you. That was awesome. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. And keep an eye out for those new projects. You. Shut up. What do I say?